Hello everybody and nobody. I am Paragon Saber and welcome back to the Great Partition in Europa Universalis 4. By the way, uh, I am probably at least five levels removed from existence, give or take a couple. <laughs> now that I've messed with everybody's minds yet again, the year is now 1480 and we still have a lot of partition existing in this rendition of the EU4 universe. Down here, Bulgaria has broken off again from Byzantium, a large force of separatists numbering 21,000, defeating Byzantine army multiple times. Castile over here, ready to put Portugal out of its Iberian misery as soon as this truce is up in 1484. Morocco doing okay down here against its successor states. Tafelalt actually moving in and destroying Tlemcen, taking even the city itself. Tunis looking pretty good, as usual. Zab and Jared, uh, Jared still alive, but uh, that's that's a thing. Scotland still holding on. They did lose Cumbria back to England after uh, a war earlier. And rest in peace, Glenn Drummond, you magnificent bastard. But uh, still holding on to more of the British Isles than AI Scotland usually ever does. France is at war with Austria. Austria is dealing with Styrian separatists. Looks like Venice might have jumped in too. Nah, Venice is actually helping Austria out. Sieging things back from the Separatists. Or they could just be passing through. Regardless, uh, again, the year now 1480. Most of the early game carnage is done by now, so I'm going to run the game at speed 4. Hopefully have a little more time pass so people don't get incredibly bored. You know, again, I assume none of you... Uh, watchers are actually going to exist, but if you happen to come out of the woodwork, uh, last thing we need is you getting bored. Of course, you probably already hate my voice. I do too. Righty then. So we still have the Chernihiv War of Independence in full swing over here, and there is the result. Ryazan given Tambov and Chernigov taking Yelech, Voronezh, Bakhmut, and Borisoglebsk. Borisob pronunciation, the bane of anybody who tries to record any of these. Chernigov now free, allied with Ryazan and Odiev, also free of the Great Horde, who is now just a three-province miner, likely about to get eaten by Crimea. So rest in peace to the Great Horde, you were once golden. But uh, not all that is gold does not glitter. I think that's how that goes. The Teutons and... Poland engaging in one of their uh, really, it's like once every decade wars, but the Teutons now without allies, even the Livonians abandoning them, so I think this one might swing in the Poles' favor. The Teutons adopting their usual strategy of sieging down Vilnius first, while the, Teut or, uh, the Polans have. Polans? The Poles have gone straight for Konigsberg. Lithuania actually accruing a significant amount of liberty desire here, up to 49.2 anymore and they'll start becoming disloyal, and I'm sure some of our Russian friends might be happy to see that happen. Up here, non-existent existent Finland is uh, back again. They were released in an earlier war, uh, where Muscovy spat them out from Novgorod. Their borders rather marred by a couple of trading cities that... Novgorod spit out beforehand, but so it goes. The city of Finnmark won their war against Norway. <laughs> the city of Finnmark is now the combined cities of Finnmark, Halogaland, and Trondelag. That's got to be a tough pill for Norway to swallow. Norway still in possession of the Shetlands, the Faroes, and southern Norway, including, I believe, Oslo. Yes, but uh, they've really lost quite a bunch, and to a trading city at that. Sweden still holding on. Uh, they lost quite a lot to Denmark earlier on, but have retained control of Stockholm. At one point, I seem to recall Stockholm being in Danish hands. That might have been in the previous run, or uh, maybe they just took it back. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Austria 
putting up a pretty solid siege on eastern France. Brittany is still in possession of Morbihan, but that's where France has focused his army at this point, deciding that the uh, impudent, shall we say, Bretons need to be punished before they turn their attention to the uh, very, very strong Austrians who are sieging down their capital. You know, France, uh, you do you. That said, Gascony also jumping in on the French dogpile, bringing in Castile to uh, attempt to take actually some of the lands that have been French since the very beginning. In this scenario, France only starts with three provinces, Paris, Saintonge, and Poitou, two of those now occupied by Gascony. Toulouse also involved, at least in name, in one of these wars against France. They're on Bre uh, Brittany's side. It appears... yeah? Uh, for a second I thought that one might have ended, but uh, not the case. Brittany getting a little bit of help by the presence of Castile's army over here. France, still not happy with them. Actually going to go for their capital in Finisterre. Scotland dealing with some Waldensians. And they don't really have the army to deal with that alone, and their ally in Tyrone, or at least their former ally. Yep, their former ally in Tyrone about to get eaten by the English-aligned forces of Kildar. In the east, looks like we have yep, Muscovy and Perm fighting no guy, so perhaps their hegemony over the Caspian steppe coming to an end. Guessing this would be a war started by Perm? Indeed, that would be the Permian conquest of Bashkortostan. Would also be good for them to take Bashkird, a gold province. Maybe not the most rich of gold provinces, only uh, two production, but still always nice to have some gold. You know, inflation is uh, rough to deal with, but could be worse. Muscovy's army actually down in Crimea, of all places. Are they involved in this war on no guy's side? That would appear to be the case. Defending against, yeah. Uh, look at that outline. No guy is a great power currently number 8, but they do hold on to 248 development, just shy of Korea. Hungary, Poland, Austria, Persia, France, and Castile rounding out the great power list, though we'll see how far France falls after all of their powerful neighbors are done with them. Paris has now fallen to Austria, we have Orléans occupied by Nevers, every province of France's aside from Lyonnais, or Lyonnais occupied. How is the partition going to start? Brittany, for one, has taken back Morbihan. Could not retrieve Nantes, though, which was occupied by Gascony instead. Speaking of Gascony, they have a few provinces occupied over here, but uh, sorry, Poitou actually is a fort, so they will be able to make some territorial gains, assuming they don't want to wait for Austria. Austria definitely the mover and shaker here, as soon as Austria pieces out then the rest can squabble over what remains. And there it is. Austria taking Vermandois and Champagne. Is there even a French army still hanging around somewhere? I am not sure. Yes, there is. So they might have more than enough power to resist the forces of, well, Gascony getting utterly destroyed in that battle. The French going up and trying to take back Picardy. Castile, rather annoyed at uh, their allies' loss there, coming up with 31,000. Things still not looking good for France, but now that Austria is out of the picture, maybe they can get her done. Of course, we do have the combined forces of Aragon and Nevers over here sieging up Bourgogne. Austria also taking Charolais in that peace deal. France not looking good. Let's just leave it at that. Castile going up to siege down Paris for Gascony. 
I have somehow selected East Frisia, probably by clicking on their navies. Brabant dealing with some noble rebels. Not fun for them, though uh, there are certainly worse rebels to have enforced their demands on you. Namely Separatists, Scotland has attempted to fight their Waldensians, but has lost. Gotta watch out for the heretics. Kildar has succeeded in eating all of Tyrone, and Sligo has just disappeared to be replaced by Thomond, who is also missing their three-star general. These champions of the Joust, great men, don't always last the longest. But Glenn Drummond, that man, he is a hero. We have no guy spawned Kazani Separatists who are uh, looking at Muscovite land at this point. Should they siege down Kazan? Uh, frankly, Muscovy will be fine, I believe. Novgorod reduced by that earlier war with Muscovy, but still have a 19,000 strong army and still retain their entire heartland, including Novgorod itself. They do have both Finland and Tver as vassals, and have allies in Gotland and Pskov. There's a little bit of uh, interaction for Gotland that I didn't expect. Gotland actually also allied with Poland. Speaking of, Poland and Mazovia. Those two have won out well in this. Poland taking back Lenchitsa, Netze, and Kulm from the Teutons. Lith uh, Lithuania getting back Traken. Poudlazier going to Mazovia, and the Teutons actually made to spit out Danzig as well. The Teutons usually do well when they've got allies on their side, but once those are gone... Oh my goodness! I looked away for just a second, and there's Saruhan, establishing a Turkish foothold in Europe once again, taking Adirn. Byzantium still holding on to Constantinople, but Macedonia has gone to Bulgaria, who is now dealing with some peasants of their own. Not looking good for the Eastern Romans. I'm still rooting for Saruhan. Who do you serve? Saruhan! Oh. I'm pretty sure if there were any viewers anybody at all watching this video, they are now gone. They're like, no, screw this, I'm out. <laughs> Over in the east, Great Power Korea, or at least I presume there's still a Great Power, indeed. Great Power Korea looking to expand even further into Yeren. Yeren uh, being the main Jurchen horde to have survived the... Well, they were the one doing the purging, really, though Korea's uh, done a little bit of that as well, taking over most of former Zhangshu land. Down in China proper, we still have Emperor Yan attempting to exercise hegemony. Has a grand total of zero tributaries now, with Korchin being deleted. And former Emperor Ming, well, he's drawn the ire of more than one enemy, including Emperor Yan. There are five people beating up on the former Emperor Ming, we're likely to see uh, a lot of land given back to a few different people. Wu has grown in size quite a bit. Uh, they were a great power for a couple minutes early in episode one. They might be able to take that back. Again, a lot of this land, insanely high development. If they're able to take back Nanjing, that has 33 development. Could go a long way toward making someone a great power again. Or a great power in the first place. Japan, uh, pretty well partitioned. Wesugi has consolidated a few more, have now completely surrounded Satake, and are attacking Imagawa, who were probably their biggest challenge uh, of the non-Shogun daimyos in the north. Meanwhile, Ando has taken a province from Ainu. Gotta say, they have some of the coolest looking province names. Penny Unkur, Menas Unkur, Sum Unkur, uh, Hokkaido. I I'd like to see somebody pull off like a world conquest or something, as I knew. Uh, I'd be very interested in that. Over in Siberia, Kamchadal is not moving much. Chukchi, not doing all that much. Everybody uh, sitting here with four development at the most. 
We'll take a glance at Southeast Asia. Balance of power does not appear to have changed all that much, though Sukathai is out again. Or were perhaps uh, never integrated in the first place, though. This going to Ayutthaya. That was formerly Sukathai's. Right now, Lan Na appearing to be the premier power in the region, though Ava looking decent, and Arakan uh, not weak. Lan Na does have this full occupation of Pegu, though. We might not see a first Tongu Empire, but they do still exist, man having managed to not die through being allied to Lan Zhang and a tributary state of Lan Na. Speaking of Lan Zhang, I believe they just lost a war. They're now guaranteed by Ayutthaya. And over here, I believe this is Champa. It is. Champa taking a lot of the land that is normally under Daiviet. Tonkin, actually one of the revolter tags that can be spawned from Daiviet, still alive, holding on to an alliance with Champa, and nobody else apparently interested enough in their territory. Kwai and Ji have consolidated, consolidated between the both of them most of eastern, or sorry, western China. And the war with Ming is over. The former emperor reduced to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 provinces, but they're all separated, whether by Emperor Yan, or Qi, or Wu. Is Wu a great power? Yes, they are. Welcome back, Wu. Now the sixth great power, appearing to have displaced... Oh, France is certainly not a great power anymore. We'll go see that carnage in a second. Regardless, Wu, with all of this insanely rich, formerly Ming land, now a great power. Also, Ming retained a lot of provinces over here that I didn't mention, so more than seven, but Ming's land completely partitioned. That is the idea. Let's look at the little guys of Ternate and Tidor. These two bitter rivals of each other, but never seem to be able to conquer each other at the start. Tidor with one more development, then turn eight, and a corresponding one more troop, but neither of them actually attacking each other. Turn eight, or turn eight taking religious ideas, and Tidor, sorry, I keep clicking on the same one I selected, Tidor taking admin ideas. One might think that easy way to tip the balance of power would be to maybe take exploration, colonize the island that's in the middle of the two of them, and suddenly, hey, that's a two-thirds to one-third advantage. Maybe not in development, that uh, middle island being only five, but anyways. In America, we're not seeing all that much from the stationary tribes like Huron and Iroquois. Not much expansion there, though Iroquois does lead a federation with Mohican. And Huron has a massive federation. Creek, Assiniboine, Fox, Osage, Sioux, Susquehannock, and Cree. I'm guessing if those two were to come to blows, the latter federation would come out on top. Chickasaw appears to have expanded a little bit, has a federation with Pawnee. Mighty, mighty Caddo resting in Chinamacha right now. Uh, Chinamacha, the province of New Orleans. Pretty rich, and also a center of trade for the... Uh, Mississippi River trade node. Down in Mexico, the Mayans reduce to Quiche and Ziu. Whoever wins the fight between them will own all of uh, the Yucatan Peninsula and the Mayan lands. A large battle taking place here. Zapotec completely occupied by Tlaxcala, as is Mixtec. It appears that Tlaxcala, who has the vassal of Totonac, is at war with the Aztecs, and is winning handily. Will we see a new emperor over here? Down in South America, Cusco not really expanding as much as they normally do. The uh, sun god perhaps not originating from there. I believe Charca is larger than they uh, tend to start as. And Wonka actually still alive. I've heard they're one of the hardest tags to start as, because they either get eaten by Kuzco or perhaps by uh, one of these other fellows. Instead, Wonka surviving, holding down alliances with Quito, Kajamarca, and Charka, and uh, doing quite well for themselves. Very little changed up here in the north for uh, those tribes. So, how has the partition of France gone? 
No longer a great power, Alan Sion spit out again. Gascony has taken Santange, Limousin, Auvergne, and Bourbon. Champagne is out in Namur. Nevers has taken Bourgogne. Var is uh, sneaking in and taking Champagne for themselves. France has had the screws put to him. Ouch. Still allied, and with the Pope at that, trying to support Lorraine's independence from, the, uh, from Provence. That alliance is long gone. Provence allied with Holstein, Alencion, Urbino, and Liège. And Lisbon taken with little fanfare by the Castilians. Neo, uh, Naples, no longer a great power, but holding down some decent alliances in Savoy, Siena, and Venice. Siena having expanded their influence to Florence. And Venice reduced, and perhaps at war? At war with Milan, Ferrara, and Savoy. Two of uh, Naples' allies at war with each other then. Oh, Byzantium, Byzantium. How far you've fallen. Epirus now trying to take their bite out of the failing Eastern Roman Empire. Though Byzantium able to gather up 6k and appears to have defeated Epirus' army. Bulgaria not involved in this war, so this all Epirus is doing then? Yep, uproot conquest of Thessaly. Well, perhaps Byzantium will be able to get back some of their other cores. Only time will tell. The Byzantines still holding on to the City of the World's Desire, Constantinople, but all of their other cores lost to either Great Great Saruhan, Bulgaria, or perhaps to Epirus, who is somehow... I think Byzantium might have taken some bankruptcy. That's about the only thing I can think of to explain how low their morale was there. They are on Tech 6 to Epirus' Tech 8. That is perhaps a factor as well. But that was still... I mean, Byzantium had double Epirus' uh, troop count. I can't think of any other reason for that massive morale difference. In the Caucasus, uh, pretty well partitioned over here. Georgia having most of its cores at the start, Abkhazia aside. Uh, Emeritia free of... Wow. Perhaps I was mistaken. Crimea being pounced on by Genoa and all of its former vassals. Or at least soon to be former vassals. They are getting utterly destroyed. Chernigov looking pretty strong, but having to deal now with Great Horde Separatists after Nogai finished them off. Nogai, again, a great power. 194 development. Uh, Korea dropping out, though. Unfortunately, not having access to the institutions will do that to you. Muscovy now taking that last spot. Regardless, there are rampaging Great Horde Separatists all over this area. Maybe we'll see a state spit out there. Who knows? Water shortage on the Siege of Yalets. Didn't know there was a fort there. But Crimea has got to be the most interesting thing here. The uh, fort in Crimea itself, probably one of the hardest, if not the hardest, to siege uh, before the obsolescence of castles. Uh, it is a level 3 coastal fort. Uh, maybe Trebizond is a little tougher. But it's a level 3 coastal fort, so if you don't have the navy, and you don't have a general with siege pips, you're looking at a minus 71% siege progress when you start. That said, these Crimean peasants, uh, doing pretty well for themselves, though losing troops very quickly to attrition. Speaking of, the Marian peasants appear to have either enforced their demands or just given up the ghost. And Epirus now with a similar sized army to Byzantium, I'm guessing that that next battle will go even further in Epirus' favor. Epirus, at this point, the only Byzantine successor state that's left. Uh, Maria was, in the original timeline, a successor state, the only one that was still around after the uh, conquest of Constantinople. Trebizond, of course, having fallen to Kandar. So, uh, you know, someone might keep the Greek legacy alive over here. 
Serbia? Still a junior partner of Hungary, still not all that happy about it. Hungary has recovered all of its Croatian cores and has completely wiped Croatia, or, uh, Bosnia from the map. Now Austria throwing its weight around at Ragusa. Ragusa leading a trade league of Hesse. Is this war Hungary's doing? Is it Austria's doing? Or none of the above? It is Hungary's doing. No surprise. Guessing their army up here on Hesse. Yep. The actual province of Hessen lost to Würzburg. In the HRE, uh, Brabant probably one of the stronger princes. Brandenburg still looking pretty good. Saxony looking great. Actually has taken territory from Bohemia. Perhaps his allied Silesia? Uh, not true, no. Saxony is allied to Poland. That'll do it. So the formerly strong king elector here in Bohemia being currently, uh, well, they're slightly occupied by uh, their usual Silesian vassal. Up here we see Novgorod continuing to throw its weight around a little bit. They are at war with the Livonian Order in the Novgorodian Conquest of Kashana Land. Where in the world is Kashana Land? By the way, there's Danish Stockholm. That's a thing now. Um, well, there's uh, only one recourse here, isn't there? Ah, the Livonians have allied the Swedes, which has led to this conflict. That does make sense. There are very few things, and by that I mean zero provinces, that Novgorod, at least, could have fabricated on, though their vassal of Finland could have fabricated on Ocel. Regardless, Novgorod looking to reunite this lands with this lonely province that uh, they gained in a war with the Swedes earlier, but then lost. The city of Finnmark continuing to exist up here, having, in that uh, earlier war with Norway, Gone from 3 development to 16, over quintupling their development. Good for them. Thinking that going up to speed 4 was a good shot, uh, I think we were maybe getting through, well, 5 episodes. We got into, what, 1480? So, at uh, that's basically 35 years, about 7 years per. At speed 4, we've gotten through almost 12. So, you know, maybe this won't last for 80-some episodes. Epirus continuing to doggedly exchange occupations with Byzantium over here, who has added a 7th troop. Again, from the results of that battle earlier, I think that if Epirus just went and fought him, life would rapidly improve for them in the form of two new provinces. Thessaly, a fairly rich one. But, uh... Choosing to stay cautious, Noti uh, noting that Hungary also has taken Oltenia and Tirgaviste, the Romanian nations now reduced to a vassal of Crimea in the case of Vassara or, uh, Moldova, Moldova, Moldavia. Speaking of, Galicia Valenia now controls that province, and uh, a one province minor, Valachia, who is under attack by Galicia Valenia. Crimea is still fighting against all of its vassals, and apparently no guy as well. Genoa rapidly expand... Massively expanding its Crimean holdings, taking all of Azov state. Good for them. These Great Horde Separatists still around in uh, Western no guy. Western Great Power no guy. Just think that's... Uh, still think that's quite cool. Afghanistan looking very good over here. They have expanded and completely taken out Khorasan and whatever was left of the Timurids. They might have even expanded into Kiva a little bit. Uh, no, not quite, but regardless, they do control Samarkand, and they have expanded, most certainly, into Baluchistan. Holding on to an alliance with Persia, maybe we'll see another great power emerge in this region. 
Speaking of former great powers, Jean Per really just resting on its laurels. They have done nothing since those first reconquests. Bengal done a, has done a little bit up here, and there is the timer. So yeah, India still looking, you know, a little bit less partitioned than earlier, but still partitioned. Regardless, it is now the year 1492. I don't think we're going to see any New World colonization, considering Portugal is all but dead and Castile's been more focused on European matters. Regardless, I have been Paragon Saber. Thank you, non-existent audience, or maybe existent audience, who knows, for watching. This has been The Great Partition. Thank you for watching.